Yeah, I'm fucking tired, guys. Uh, I've been celebrating since Saturday night. <laughs> NBA Finals! Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be amazing! Saturday night was incredible. It's like the entire city had an orgy. <laughs> and I've just been coming down from that. You know, you know what it's like the days following an orgy, right? You guys don't know. Uh, <laughs> just drained. No, it's so nice. You go to like an orgy and everybody's screaming your name. Oh, so good. Leonard! Leonard! Oh, <laughs> oh god. Uh, yeah, no, it's Asian Heritage Month. Thank you guys so much for coming out to the show. This is awesome. Uh, yeah, I told my dad I was doing an Asian Heritage Month show and he was like, but you're a banana. <laughs> I was like, who taught you that word? <laughs> Uh, so if you guys don't know, it's like yellow on the outside, white on the inside. My dad doesn't even believe I'm Chinese. That's insane. So I was like, no, I'm gonna, I'm celebrating Asian heritage. I took a DNA test, right? <laughs> but it turns out, actually, uh, no, I'm Asian. I'm Asian. <laughs> this is this test not for people like me. It was just rice farmers the whole way back. <laughs> this is like a DNA test. I think is for like boring white people who want something interesting to say at cocktail parties. Right, they get the results, they're like, come on, Cherokee. <laughs> come on, Cherokee! <laughs> Fuck Hitler! <laughs> uh, so no, I'm Asian, I'm an Asian comment, it's not a lot of us. Everybody, they're all here tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not a lot of us. You know, a lot of, not a lot of Asians, I think, have the courage to get on stage and destroy their parents' dreams. <laughs> Uh, but it's totally my parents' fault that I'm uh, an Asian comic. I mean, they hate it. They hate that I'm an Asian comic, and it's their fault that I'm Asian, obviously. But uh, <laughs> it's also their fault I'm a comic, because here's the thing, like, my, my dad was super poor, my grandfather was super rich, and my mom, when she moved to Canada, thought my dad, she gave up all that money for love. So dumb. <laughs> so fucking stupid. My, back in Hong Kong, my mom was a baller, all right? She had a chauffeur. I've never had a chauffeur in Canada. <laughs> Unless you count the bus as some sort of communist limo. <laughs> so all I'm saying is if they just stay in Hong Kong, there's no way I'd be a comedian right now, right? Because like that, that empty hole inside me, I'm desperately trying to fill with the validation of strangers. <laughs> I could have filled that with money. <laughs> so much better. Uh, so no, my parents from Hong Kong, I grew up in Canada, so my childhood was a mixture of white and Asian stuff. So like peanut butter and jelly fish. <laughs> no, I used to, I rode, I rode horses when I was a kid, that's very white. Yeah, but look, I know Asians ride horses too, but I was a competitive show jumper. Yeah, it's a very non-Chinese way to ride a horse. <laughs> because as all of you know, the Chinese way to ride a horse uh, is to slaughter Mongolians. <laughs> Too soon? Okay. <laughs> no, but white Asian stuff. So like I rode horses very white, but my parents would take the riding crop that I would hit the horses with, they would beat me with it. Yeah, very Asian. <laughs> like the different cultures have different ways of disciplining their kids. Like Asians hit their kids, white people use Santa. <laughs> By the way, my parents never let me believe in Santa. Didn't want me grown up thinking a white man would ever give anything away for free. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Asians aren't about positive reinforcement, right? Like my parents never hugged me when I was a kid, right? You guys know. Right? Look, and if that makes you sad, that's because you're weak. That's why China's gonna take over the world. <laughs> you know, like I think white parents take positive reinforcement too far. Like I was recently hanging out with a friend of mine, and her five-year-old was just punching her for no reason, and she was like, "Oh my God, if you stop, I'll give you chocolate." I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? That's insane. <laughs> like, if I was a kid to punch my mom, I'm not getting chocolate. I'm getting sold in the black market. <laughs> like, look, I don't have kids, so I'm not supposed to have an opinion on how to raise kids, but I had a dog and it bit me. I'm not gonna give it a treat. I'm gonna give it chocolate. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no, I, uh... I went to school, the kids made fun of me because of my name, Leonard, right? It's not a, it's not a good name. Uh, you know what I don't like about my name? It's not a name that women can scream out in bed. <laughs> you know, like, oh yes, Leonard. <laughs> right there, Leonard. Like, fuck it, stop saying my name! It sounds like you're banging a dentist. 
but kids made fun of me. Uh, they called me Lenert in grade school. We live in a bilingual country, got made fun of in two languages. But uh, here's the thing, I wouldn't have gotten made fun of anyways, because my immigrant mom made the immigrant mistake of sending me to school with an immigrant lunch. Right, you guys all, you guys know, right? Because right, like, kids make fun of stuff that's weird, right? Like, everybody knows, like, Asians eat weird shit. Right, like just shark, jellyfish, whatever, we eat everything. Like in China, the show Planet Earth airs on the Food Network. <laughs> so, yeah, we eat everything. My mom sent me to school with ox tongue, right, which is delicious. It's so good, and then all the kids made fun of me. I went home crying to my mom, I was like, Mom, no more tongue, which is a weird thing to say to your mom. <laughs> But no, man, I integrated into to Canadian culture. I married a white woman. That's right. Yeah, I can screw those white guys and their Asian girl fetishes. I'm taking one back for the team! Yeah, we need this. Our team's getting killed right now. <laughs> but like, here's a fun fact. Uh, my wife's name is Jackie. If you guys are paying attention, my last name is Chan. <laughs> Yeah, she took my name, I'm married to Jackie Chan. <laughs> the irony of my life. I finally get one up on the scoreboard, I get a white woman, marry her, turn her into the most famous Asian in the world. <laughs> man, I got married for that joke. Uh, <laughs> I like it though, man. I like being married. You know, it's nice it's not to just have to load anymore, you know, like dying. <laughs> like my wife and I play video games together. We play the game called Bomberman. Yeah, some people know. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, it's a game we try to kill each other with bombs before time runs out. And I beat her all the time. She gets so mad. She's like, why do you kill him with bombs? I'm like, that's literally the point of the game. <laughs> She's like, well, why can't we just cooperate and keep each other alive until time kills us? I'm like, that's what we're doing in real life! <laughs> Gonna be. I can live a long time because my parents love me. They had me vaccinated. <laughs> no, my wife and I talked about. We both agreed, right? Marriage has been ruined by modern medicine. Right? Like when they first invented marriage, people didn't live that long. Right? You got married at 16, then at 23, you died of the mumps. It's great. That's perfect. It's seven years, right? That's the perfect amount of time to be with one person. Right? You get the seven year itch, it's a rash that kills you. <laughs> you know, if you get married, you gotta do something, you gotta buy a ring, you know, that shit's expensive. Anybody get married? <laughs> oh my god. Two people, everybody else is like, fuck commitment! Okay. <laughs> right. um, no, I had to buy a ring, right? And he was like, I'm a comedian, it's not like we make a lot of money. So then she was like, no, 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 it's fine. You know, like as long as you buy me something and it means like this, you know, it's, it's, it symbolizes your love for me. If you put an onion ring on my finger, it wouldn't matter. And I was like, Oh, that's so nice. She was like, cool, let's go to Tiffany's. <laughs> like, Fuck, so we go to Tiffany's, and she sees this ring, and it's really expensive. And I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna afford this. <laughs> and then my buddy was like, yo, I know this dude at Pacific Mall. <laughs> I can make that ring for half the cost. I was like, holy shit, that's amazing. So I told my wife, I was like, we can get this. She was like, yeah, but then the ring won't be from Tiffany's. And then my friend was like, yo. You can buy a Tiffany's box off of eBay. Put the ring in that, she'll never know. <laughs> I was like, fuck, that's so brilliant. Uh, and then I bought her the ring. I bought her the ring from Tiffany's. Because right? I love her. Also, I don't trust Chinese craftsmanship. <laughs> but, uh, no, you say, like marriage, I learned about putting up with stuff. Like my wife is late all the time, drives me insane. Because right? I was always taught to be on time. The other day I called my mom, I was like, Mom, we should get together and have a family dinner. It's been a while. And mom was like, Yeah, we've been having family dinners the last six months. We just haven't invited you because you're late all the time. It's embarrassing. <laughs> I was like, What the fuck? Who's at these family dinners? I'm an only child. <laughs> My wife wants to do the Amazing Race. Do you guys know the Amazing Race? Yeah. So, you know, time management, critical skill to success on that show. I was like, yeah, let's do it. It'd be a super fun way to get divorced. Because <laughs> that's 100% what would happen. Like, 
Her being late on time is just so stressful for me, man. Like, it stresses me out so much, I'm having nightmares about it. Like, a couple weeks ago, I had a nightmare that my wife and I were two unicorns late for the ark. <laughs> I'm trying to get out the door. I'm like, it's a boat party. You can't be late for a boat party. And she's like, paging her hose, brushing her mane. Where the fuck are these unicorns going to get ready? <laughs> so we leave the house late. We get to the dock just in time. Watch the ark sail away. Starts to rain. I wake up furious. <laughs> And my wife's just sleeping next to me, all innocent. And she's not responsible for the death of an entire species. It's like, you monster. <laughs> Briefly considered smothering her with a pillow. Uh, didn't. Of course I didn't, right? Because I love her. And also, it's not going to help me. Even if she's dead, she's still going to be my late wife. <laughs> My wife just quit her job recently, right? Quit a high paying job consulting. Take a no paying job in animal rescue. You know, because she's following her dreams. Yeah, I totally fucked up my dreams, but <laughs> that's fine. Um, yeah, like, just, like she, she loves animals, man. She's rescuing animals. She, she rescues cats. Right into my house. 13 cats in my house right now. Yeah, it's fucked up. It was like, you know what it's like living with 13 cats? It's like a wish gone horribly wrong. Like, I met a genie, and I was like, I want to live in a house full of pussy, and this is what I got. <laughs> but man, she's following her dreams. She's following her dreams of animal rescue. I'm following my dreams of comedy. All right, I love her. I support her. She loves me. She supports me. But I think we've hit a point in our relationship where I think it's time that we open up our marriage. Because we need somebody to pay for things. <laughs> Like, dreams are so expensive. I'm going poly for the money, man. <laughs> like, boy, girl, it doesn't matter. If their assets are liquid, my sexuality is fluid. <laughs> but man, no, my favorite part about marrying a white woman is for the next 30 years, I'm gonna keep looking like this. She's gonna keep getting older. <laughs> At some point real soon, everybody's gonna start thinking of her adopted Asian son. <laughs> That's one, of, that's, one of, like, that's one of the stereotypes about Asians. Asians age really well, and it's true, Asians age so well. Like, Asians age so much better than white people. And like, Asians age like wine. White people age like bread. <laughs> right, not all the white people like that. <laughs> see some faces like, Come on, white people! Why gotta be so crusty? But uh, nah, man, like, speaking of birthdays, I recently had to perform at a birthday party, which I did not enjoy. Yeah, well, look, I didn't get into this business to not be the center of attention, okay? <laughs> but also, this is a weird fucking party, all right? The theme of the party was the Great Gatsby. That's not the weird, that's not the weird part. Everybody there was Asian. Yeah, that's the weird part. Yeah, you guys remember 1920s America when Asians were doing great? <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> Like the only historically accurate person there was the DJ because she was laying down tracks. <laughs> you guys didn't laugh at that, read a fucking book. <laughs> it's like Canadian heritage moment. <laughs> but uh, Asians are doing alright, we're doing fine now, we're doing alright. We have a movie! Yeah! You guys see Crazy Rich Asians, who's seen it? Yeah, who, who hasn't seen it? Fuck, dude, you're Asian. This is our Black Panther. And Singapore is our Wakanda. You gotta watch. That was huge, man. 2018 was huge. We had two movies with Asian leads. That's huge. It's huge. It's like huge progress. Because in 2017, there's only one movie with an Asian lead. And that Asian was Scarlett Johansson. It's fucked. It's weird, Hollywood can still, like, it's, like, it's weird that you can still make fun of Asians, like, that's a thing that people still do, like, I don't know if you guys remember, like, during the Oscars, uh, two years ago, like, Chris Rock came out and he had all these, like, Asian kids, and he was like, these are our accountants, like, that's fucked up, you know, and then Sasha Baron Cohen came out and he was like, oh, Asians have small dicks, basically he said that on the broadcast, it's insane, you know, and I think it's weird, and I hate it, like, it's acceptable that Asians still get made fun of, like, and I really hate it when like Asian comics make fun of other Asians. Like that drives me insane. Like I hear another Asian comic saying how Asian small dicks are fucking pillow. <laughs> it's 
It's not, you know, they're just throwing, they're like just trying to get a cheap laugh, man. They're throwing the entire race under the bus for a cheap laugh. I was like, you're an Uncle Tom. You're an Asian Uncle Tom. You're an Uncle Tom young girl. <laughs> but uh, no, I remember like, because there's that, you know, there's a stereotype Asians with small dicks, which is a weird thing. And I remember I met this girl who was like, I would never have sex with an Asian because Asians with small dicks. I was like, what? I was like, where did you hear that? And she was like, I read a study. I was like, science? <laughs> science is supposed to be my friend! <laughs> Fuck! She was like, yeah, she went to study. The age of the small, like, smallest dicks on average. I was like, well, come on, like, what does that mean, all right? On average, right? Like, because, like, and all the sample size matters, because you have to give huge variance, right? Because you could, like, look at, like, four Asians, say Asians have, like, four and a half inch dicks, look at three Asians with six inch dicks, one Asian with a zero inch dick, <laughs> right? And I was like, you know, I'm so mad that I have to defend against an Asian stereotype using math. <laughs> but uh, the Asians are doing it right now. Like Asians are cashing up to white people. And I know this because how they treat our mass murderers. Well, it's a fucked up premise. <laughs> Every time there's a mass murder, it was a, a black guy or a brown guy, they blame the culture. Right? They're like, it's all that violent rap, it's all that violent religion. But if it's a white guy or an Asian, Suddenly, it's a mental health issue, <laughs> right? They don't blame the culture. It's like, oh, it's all those violent John Woo movies that Michael Bublé was listening to. <laughs> they blame the individual like they're supposed to. They treat Asian murders like white murders. We made it. All right, high five. <laughs> oh, I can't leave any further. All right. Uh, now, you might ask yourself, like, how many Asians actually commit mass murder? More than we should. Uh, <laughs> the population of North America is 9% Asian, but Asians make up 17% of all mass murders. Yeah, it's fucked up. Even when it comes to mass murder, Asians are overachievers. <laughs> Look, you laughed at that because you know the stereotype, right? It's a positive stereotype. You know, there's also a lot of negative stereotypes about Asians, like Asians have small dicks, which maybe everybody will stop saying now that you know how much we love murder. <laughs> that was legit the only point of that joke. Just <laughs> stop saying small dicks or I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> but no, I'm glad to... Uh, you know, we live, I live I'm in Canada, my parents could have moved to America, it's a fucking dumpster fire down there right now, right? It's brutal. And, and you know, in Canada, I guess compared to America a lot, I think we're very different countries, right? We just have to look at the leaders that we elected. Like, Canada elected Justin Trudeau, who's very pretty. <laughs> Tries a little bit too hard. He's like the Anne Hathaway of world leaders. <laughs> no, but he reads, you know, he's well-read, he speaks a couple languages, very, very Canadian. Now, America elected Donald Trump the Donald Trump of world leaders. <laughs> Doesn't read, speaks no languages. <laughs> the only thing Canadian about him is the same color as Kraft Dinner. <laughs> Here's the thing, I like Trump, I do, you know? Because I'm Chinese, I think walls are great. <laughs> but like, I don't want walls around this country, man. I love this country, you know, because they allowed my parents to come in here with open arms so I could grow up in this country that I love. This country is amazing, right? Universal health care, clean water, women's curling. Oh, women's curlers are so hot. Is it just me? Yeah, they're so hot. All right. oh, yeah, it's a white guy knows. <laughs> right, like, I think, like, I think it's just I'm a fan of punctuality, so it's just gonna rouse any time a woman yells at me to hurry. <laughs> it's like, hurry hard! Oh, my God. <laughs> but look, man, I love curling and I love Canada. I'm just not American about it, right? Because Americans, they're like super patriotic. They need everybody knows that they're American, right? And I think with Canadians, you know, it's a little different. You know, we love our country, but especially as a child of an immigrant, we never forget where we came from. I think that's a huge difference from American and Canada. And here's the story, I think, to illustrate that difference. I was recently in Europe, I was on a flight coming back uh, from Europe. I was at the airport waiting to catch my flight, and this woman who was wearing a shirt made out of a US flag and a hat that said, make America great again, uh, both of which were made in China. <laughs> she cuts past me in line, all right? Uh, but I'm a Canadian, so I don't say anything. <laughs> and then she gets on the plane in front of me. She's got three bags. She puts me over a compartment. There's no room for my stuff. But I'm a Canadian, so I don't say anything. <laughs> then she gets in the seat right in front of me. She reclines her seat the whole way, right in my face. But I'm a Canadian, so I don't say anything. Mm -hmm. But because I'm Chinese, I passive-aggressively knee her in the back for the entire flight. <laughs> I might not be able to make America great again, but as a minority, I can definitely make America uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you guys so 